Uh, I'm 10 years in uh, quality, uh, five years plus in test automation. And lately, as I'm working in small startup, I'm doing everything. So I'm like developer, bit of DevOps, working with uh, uh, deployment and observability concepts. So I'm best DevOps whatever guy. And uh, I really like this kind of uh, multi-head personalities that I have. And I'm a big fan of serverless uh, in later stages. And in free time, I enjoy climbing, uh, which is totally sucks <coughs> if you live in Amsterdam, in a totally flat country. So I'm going to Ardennes and uh, Alps all the time, and I like Belgian beer. Too much sometimes. Delirium still have uh, yeah, some influence on my speech, let's say. Okay, move on. So what's wrong about Selenium? The question uh, that uh, I already heard, is nothing wrong with Selenium. Selenium is like 15 years of history, lots of uh, contributors, lots of uh, yeah, open source different projects like uh, yeah, uh, Nightwatch and yeah, WaveDriver IO and stuff. So I'm not advocating against Selenium. I just want to show you guys what else is available for the choice. Uh, when I joined um, uh, my recent company, I was uh, selecting where to go, like which way to go, and uh, we have a lot of GS uh, code base and GS developers. So I so, thought, okay, let's see what kind of available on GS market for the test automation, except Selenium. So uh, this is like three uh, choices that I had back then. The Puppeteer, uh, do you guys know about Puppeteer? Use it? Okay. Uh, I think that is great tool, but it's not test automation tool, it's browser automation tool. So it's good for like making kind of spies and crawlers and stuff like that. Uh, it's done uh, by Google guys to test uh, Chrome itself. So yeah, very powerful, but not very easy to use, let's say. Uh, the second one is Test Cafe. Someone use Test Cafe? Okay, not so much. It used to be very kind of a big and um, commercial framework. They open source it also recently. It's uh, done by developers and quality automation engineers for quality automation engineers. So it contains a lot of QA oriented topics and QA related uh, kind of things that might narrow uh, choices that you can have. And uh, the last one is Cypress. Uh, back then it was like 0.2 version or something. So it, I, I made re really a bet to go with it. And I uh, really don't regret for now. So what Cypress is, is a yeah, test automation framework, uh, JavaScript, you can also write TypeScript, of course. It's an Electron uh, runner uh, and debugger application uh, bundled, uh, and also it's a SaaS uh, platform for balancing and uh, test recording. So it's kind of thing in, in itself. Uh, for later, you, you have to pay a bit if you want to use it on a scale, but for a free open source project, it's free, and you don't need to uh, worry about your uh, Selenium grid cluster and stuff like that. So it's all balanced on the SaaS side. Why Cypress for me? I was like one QA guy in the company and uh, in my previous company I also want, want, was one QA guy and 80 developers and uh, I wanted to scale. I wanted to not only be a bottleneck, so whether I was choosing the framework or the tool or whatever choices I do in my professional career, I think about who going to use it, and most of the cases is going to be developers, so it should be developer friendly. That is uh, uh, decision number one that I made. Uh, and second one, in Cypress you can go up and down and test pyramids, so you can write a unit test, API integration test, and end-to-end -end test in one tool or one framework. So um, you don't need to maintain multiple code bases or, or multiple paradigms when you switch. Uh, so what's endeavor-oriented kind of why I think it's dev oriented, it contains a lot of tools already bundled, already prepackaged. Uh, so Cypress tests are basically uh, mocha tests, so very familiar syntaxes for everyone, uh, with chai assertions, with lots of other like libraries that are very uh, common in the JavaScript uh, landscape. Uh, it contains already reporters out of the box uh, with multiple uh, tools supported, like JUnit reporter, mocha reporter. CLI reporter, JSON, whatever. So you can plug it into your reporting uh, tools or portals to uh, get information <coughs> about your test runs. Uh, it's extendable by plugins. So I know that guys were complaining that I, we don't have uh, uh, Gherkin bindings or uh, Cucumber bindings for, 
for Cypress, so someone wrote a plugin that now you can use the, the Gherkin language uh, for tests. Uh, uh, you can write, you can um, add your uh, stuff there. Uh, it's very easy to set up for uh, your project. Uh, it's CI ready, so by that I mean that we have around 20 plus uh, examples for almost all of the CI uh, tools to integrate Cypress with. So it's either like, I don't know, GitLab, Drone, cl uh, Cloud CI, or uh, Circle CI, or Travis. It has uh, extended debugging capabilities. Uh, you can inspect your test really well because your test is basically running inside of your browser. Uh, so you have access to everything inside of the DOM, inside of the browser. Uh, yeah, spice, uh, stops and uh, clocks. So if you want to mock your function for unit tests, you use spice or, or, or stops. Uh, if you want to uh, control the time, and you can control the time in Cypress, for, um, for example, you have like annoying four seconds spinner when the user waiting for something to happen. Uh, in tests, if you have like more than 100 tests, it's already like 400 seconds that your test run is just delayed. So with the Cypress, you can control the time and say, okay, now plus four seconds, and uh, this will be carried on in the browser and in, in, the, in the test. So you can control the time, you can fast forward for this kind of animation purposes. And it contains automatic weights. So in Selenium, you have to uh, assert if element is present, if not present, wait, 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 wait. So it's kind of a lot of synchronous code. In Cypress, uh, weights are um, implicit. So if you do any kind of... Uh, Action on elements, it will wait for default timeout for this element to be present on the page. And uh, that's why there is no like stale element exceptions as you have in Selenium. So less flakiness for, in this way. So talking about different uh, layers, unit integration and end-to-end -end layers, go a little bit uh, in depth there. So this is how the test looked like. Uh, as I said, mocha syntax. You describe your uh, test case. Before each of test execution, you visit the page. You visit index HTML. Then you start a server, uh, the, the mock server, and you say that for any request that application will try to make for this route, uh, post request, I will return to 100%, and you make alias as upload function. Then you prepare your test file, because you want to, let's say, test a file upload. And on uh, file upload, uh, element, you trigger change with this file, and then you just validate that the route was called. So uh, in this way, you kind of yeah, making uh, start backend uh, calls. For API tests or end-to-end -end tests, uh, you can either go through UI completely. So in this case, uh, the example is a user who is not authorized try to visit the dashboard page, and we want to validate that unauthorized users should be redirected to other page with, uh, in this case, uh, text containing you are not logged in and the uh, URL should can have unauthorized. So this is example number one, when you actually hitting the web page, visiting, loading everything, dis uh, rendering everything, uh, and checking that you will be redirected. So it's kind of slow and be fragile because it's asserting on the text on the page. So you can do, uh, it's in the API level, so you can use, execute the request. So CI request is, is API call. Uh, without loading anything, you're just executing uh, call to the dashboard page. And then you expect that uh, response will be uh, 302, so not authorized. And you also expect that URL will contain unauthorized. So you have two options, either go through completely UI or go through API. And uh, I do a lot of API uh, parts in my test for seeding, like user login, authorization, uh, preparing some uh, test data and stuff like that. And uh, last, it's end-to-end -end tests. Here I will show some demo. Uh, so we organized everything that we have on our web pages in uh, page objects. So you have selectors on the page. You have uh, methods that you can do on the page, like login, register, do something. So it's bundled in page objects. Then we split our user flow in parts. So we have user registering, user login, user uh, making offer, user applying for this offer, and user signing in. So this is subflows that contains pages inside. 
uh, and the big flow is uh, grouping everything. I came with this idea because I didn't want to make code duplication and, and uh, I, I wanted to have tests very, very like short, simple, uh, instead of repeating everything, like every time I log in uh, or every time I create a user, I want to have it in, uh, in test like explicit or implicit. So I kind of over abstract sheet out of my test framework and uh, I didn't like it now uh, because it grew out of proportion. We were five developers when I joined and now it's 30 and uh, I will show you uh, on example how it looked like. Uh, can you see me on the back? So, okay, maybe I should move to Zen mode. Anyway, this is a test. So first I prepare lots of test data that will control the test execution. So I say, okay, this is user parameters, um, different, different user parameters, uh, arguments. Then the, before execution of the test, I load all of the data and then I run everything. So when this test fails and you have to debug it as a developer, you're gonna come to me and say, Pavel, I hate you. And you will be right because it's completely not clear what happens, right? So the, the test fails and then we open it first. Okay, you have this uh, flow and then you go inside of the flow and there is another nested things and you go there as okay, again another something nested and finally you arrive at the point when there is an assertion. So assertions were also outside of the test. Anti-pattern, I think this gentleman asked me what you should not do, you should not make assertions in, outside of your test, I think. So <coughs> this is not clear, not good, at least for me. And this is how we're doing it right now. So tests are quite long, quite explicit. So you can see on every page what you're doing. Uh, so it's easier to debug if it fails. It's very long, it's like 100 lines and stuff, so it's a lot of code duplication, but sometimes it's okay to make it if you want to uh, increase readability of the test. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how we do it in the new 10 and a few of my suggestions to you guys. Uh, Cypress, of course, have some trade-offs. It's not a silver bullet whatsoever. So first trade-off and number one, the biggest one for most of the people, it's only Chrome browser. So you cannot test multi-browsers, you cannot test Firefox or Internet Explorer or Safari with the Cypress. Lately, in the uh, last few years, browsers uh, go closer and closer in APIs to each other. So I kind of trust that in 95% of cases, it's going to be the same. So and the other 5% of cases, yeah, it will be, yeah, it will be different, but then you can also get it from your monitoring, login, or, or, or users. So it's only Chrome. Uh, it's test automation tool, it's not Swiss Army Knife, so uh, <coughs> don't use Cypress for, uh, as a lot of people use Puppeteer for like uh, scrolling, scanning. It's not an API tool as well, so you cannot replace all of the API testing uh, with Cypress. And of course, it's not a performance testing tool. Uh, it runs in single browser on the single tab. So you have to, if you have messaging applications that, um, like I don't know, Facebook or whatever, when you have user A, user B talking with each other, uh, inside of one uh, test, this will not be possible. So you cannot make multi-user uh, uh, tests in in Cypress. And it works on the same super domain pages if inside of scope of one test. So in one test, you can use uh, star.google.com, but you can use star.google.com and star.facebook.com. So you cannot visit super domains uh, in, one of, in, in one test. Uh, so yeah, St strategies, common strategies uh, with Cypress, you have to define you want to stop backend or not stop backend. You want to test completely from end to end, or you can use it, uh, you can use the API tests. What I do, I have few smoke tests, which are completely end to end, not mocked, not stopped, and rest, uh, uh, I stopped out or, 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 or mock it out. Tests are deterministic, means that uh, you don't, you never should have the casing or uh, uh, conditions in your test. It means that you don't know what you're doing if you 
expecting in some cases element A or element B presence, that means that you not, do not control your application state and uh, Cypress allow you to control application state completely. Tests are, should be independent, so uh, you should not create a test that first log in and then another test is that do something on the page. So because if first fails, test fails, second will fail because user is not logged in. So tests are supposed to be completely independent from each other. Uh, Cypress doesn't have XPath uh, locators capability. So for someone it's bad, for me it's okay. Uh, I, I never liked XPath and I think no one likes. Uh, you shouldn't test third parties as you don't control third parties. So again, example of login page, if you log in with Facebook, don't go and test how the Facebook works. Just mock it out or uh, stop it out. And it's fine to have multiple assertions in one test. So it's fine to uh, visit the page and check everything in the page. You don't need to, as a unit test, have granular tests per assertion. It's, it's all right. It's kind of also saving time. So that's uh, test strategies. And as I said in the past year, I was uh, testing dev room. Now it's testing dev room. It's not present. So I have to say it from face of all of the testers. Guys, whatever you do, whatever you choose, whatever framework you choose, just go and write tests. Testing is great. Uh, it gives you confidence in your code. It gives you confidence when you refactor stuff. So just write tests. That's it. Okay, question time. <laughs> well, really. <laughs> we have only two microphones. Yeah, so um, uh, for my company, I've been doing some Cypress tests. We're quite new at doing Cypress tests. So basically, we started from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but what I noticed wa what's, what was kind of a problem is that um, when you decide not to stop um, and you want to do end-to-end -end testing, you run into problems when, for example, you need to check whether a file has been downloaded or you want to upload a file. Yeah. That really uh, breaks everything because uh, if you download something, for example, you go out of the DOM, so Cypress gets super confused. Um, I was wondering maybe you have some solutions for that or... But you're checking that the file is actually do uh, downloaded on the backend side, right? Yeah, so you're doing or API for example, the if you uh, have something in the backend that changes something in the UI, but as well downloads something that oh. like breaks the code completely. Oh, right. So I was wondering, maybe you have a solution for that? Yeah, for, for this kind of cases, I try to uh, use ex uh, Cypress exec, so you can execute some kind of uh, yeah, npm node uh, functions outside of Cypress, so outside of the browser. So then you can do all, all of these like, backend checks and things like that. So this might help. Uh, but yeah, don't trust backend. Cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> don't trust anyone, yeah. I'm QA, I, have, I shouldn't trust. So, uh, more questions? Yeah? Uh, hey, uh, when do you usually run your end-to-end -end test? Is it like on stage server, on production, while development, or on All CI? All the time. All the time, yeah. everywhere, so, right? so we, we run it on deploys, we run it on commits, we run it on push requests, on merge requests, okay. so all the time. And, and you received all, all the time you receive the same result, and it should be the same result, right? Like, on stage server, it should be... Yeah, unless be it's broken. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. How long do your tests run? How long? Yes. Uh, if you put it sequentially, I think it's around 10 hours. Uh, if you run it in parallel, it's uh, eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we had the problem really with running tests and uh, before the Cypress implemented this parallel uh, on the dashboard, we have to make all sorts of like our parallelization and splitting. So we build build our like dispatcher. So we put 
set of tests and it creates like Docker Swarm instances and then on each instance you try to run the test and stuff, but yeah. Uh, it's easier with the, with the Cypress dashboard. Yeah? I have a question. Yeah, sure. Can you please take a photo of us and then everybody? If, sure. if you don't want a photo, <laughs> that's fine, just hide your face. You okay. don't want to be with us. Yeah, it's hard to put everybody on the photo. I will try again. That's a good problem. Yeah. One, two, three. Cheers! Works. Yeah, make three. Thanks. Okay. No more questions? Oh, one more. Oh, yeah, because uh, if questions are not in microphone, the people who are watching it uh, cannot hear. Yeah. Do you have a generator for those tests? No. No. No, okay. it's uh, really man-written, you know. So okay. Kind of Is it uh, planned or? Yeah. Yes. If you want to know what we, we test and we want to make sure that it's not automatically checking all of the things on the, on the, on the page or something. Okay. All right. No more questions? We still have time, so don't be shy. Yes, hello. Uh, so uh, in your integration test example, uh, you showed some uh, um, promise uh, execution. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, there was uh, some magic happening, I think, that it waited until the end. Uh, do you know a bit more about those? Uh, because in my other frameworks, I still had to be very explicit about when I'm downloading stuff and so on. Yeah, so in, in Cypress, uh, it's, the code looks like synchronous. Mm -hmm. But it's unsynchronous, uh, so they implemented their own version of promises, which okay. m magic. Yeah, sometimes it's debugging hell magic, but <laughs> in most of the cases, like 99% is fine. Uh, so yeah, you don't have a sync awaits inside of your test much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, my question is: What kind of application can you test with uh, Cypress? Like just a web page application? So I know that people test web pages. I know that people test Chrome uh, plugins, well, like extensions. Applications that use Electron or Node WebKit? Uh, yeah, everything that runs inside of the Chrome, pretty much. Because Cypress is kind of Electron application on itself? Uh, the, the runner is Electron application, and I forgot to show it. Good, good point. So this is a Cypress runner. So it shows you all of the test sets, and it shows you uh, execution of the set test. So. For example, I'm going to run one test now. I hope I'm not, uh, I'm not on Wi-Fi. No, I'm. So here I'm doing the, the API call to seed up the, the user. Uh, and after that, if Wi-Fi will be a bit faster, I, I will show you the test runs. But this is just rendering. This is just rendering what happens inside of the uh, driver server, uh, Cypress driver server. What I like also in this kind of application, when you're debugging tests and you're writing tests, you can go back in history and you can expect elements and DOM uh, of the past, you know? So you can see oh, what happens, you can see what's missed, uh, you can see some logs during the test run. So this kind of nice thing for me. You can also debug tests here, so you basically inside of the test you can put in between like debug and then it will stop there and you will have full access to the the browser state at this moment. So that's, but that's everything is run within the browser. Everything runs within the browser, so when you run a test on CI, it's what it does, it's uh, boot up the, 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 the Docker image, well, you run the ins inside of the Docker image, let's say, so it's run it. Then uh, it's, you, it's run the Chromium or, or Electron, actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of heavy in, in this sense. So the, the Cypress minimalistic image is around 400 megabytes. Uh, and if you record video of the test, so you have options of just recording the screenshots of the failures or the whole video of test run. If it record video of the test, it boots also the, the window manager, XVVM, uh, FMMPEG, so it's like really heavy, you know, so it can be a bit slow. So I would not suggest to, uh, at least on CI, uh, work with videos. But if you're making yourself an Electron application or yeah. another WebKit, can you run Cypress within the same application? Yeah. Yeah. 
Ja se on. Uh.